days and bless all our efforts and success. Forgive us our shortcomings and give us the courage to follow always the path of truth. It is a pleasure for me to welcome Mr. Umar Ismail Khan, sir, Secretary, Rosia Engineering Trust, who is rendering a yeoman service to society in general and to cause of education in particular. Welcome you, sir. I take this opportunity to introduce and welcome our new university nominee, Sri Karan Kumar, sir, senior syndicate member, Bengaluru City University, to this governing council meeting. I, principal of BET Sadatunisa College, on behalf of the entire administration, faculty, wholeheartedly welcome you, sir. Under your leadership and guidance, may we reach the next levels of glory. Congratulations and welcome, sir. Thank you. It is a matter of great pleasure and honor for me to welcome our Honorary Secretary, Mr. Mohammed Saifullah, sir, Joint Secretary, J.R. Riaz Ahmed, sir, to this virtual meeting. I once again welcome you all. So let me begin the meeting with the first agenda. That is reading uh, the minutes of the previous meeting. The second governing council meeting of the academic year 2021 was held on March 18th at 11 a.m. through online mode. The members participated in the meeting to the same extent as if they were physically present. Agenda number one, to read and record the discussion suggestions and recommendations of previous meeting. Council confirmed the proceedings of the meeting held on November 20, 2020. Action taken on the minutes of the meeting held on November 20 was presented and approved. To present principal's report. The key highlights of the principal's report was 26th of November, a faculty development program was held in the campus, which was organized by Department of Hindi on a research methodology and aptitude. The speaker for the session was Dr. Anita S. Karpur, author and associate professor, Dane College, CGS, Bangalore. December 18th, local inquiry committee from Bengaluru City University visited our college to verify the infrastructural facilities to consider their proposal for renewal of affiliation. 22nd of December, a transformational ED seminar for leaders and teachers. Teachers from various institutions participated in the seminar. 23rd and 24th, second and fourth semester results were announced. And on 26th of December, election to the Student Council was held. 30th December, online validatory ceremony for the students who successfully completed tally with GST was conducted by MIA Skill Development Kendra. 1st of January, as every year, a year in review PPT, an executive summary of the entire year was presented. 9th of January, a webinar on communication skills was held by Mr. Ahmed, Human Resources Director, Cap Gemini, Hyderabad, Telangana, India. 16th of January, parents' meeting was held, and the honor of pinning the badges for the class reps and student union was done by their parents. 24th January, Department of Urdu had arranged the recording of Shaukat Pardesi's Gazas by famous Sufi singer Kanak Joshi in the campus. 24th of January, National Voters' Day was observed, and on 26th January, Republic Day was celebrated. 1st of February, Canada Certificate Course results were declared, and the pass percentage was 100%. Per, 100%. February 4th and 17th, ISO ESC certification audit was conducted, and on March 5th, 2021, college was recertified again with ISO 9000 2015 for implementing all the requirements of QMS. February 10th, workshop for teachers was conducted by international trainer and motivator from uh, Gujarat to stay updated as 21st century learners and to be conversant with information, communication technologies and the teaching methodologies associated with ICT towards transforming the learner to become a valuable citizen in the society. 11th of February, graduation day of batch to 2019-20 was celebrated and on the same day, a library with latest infrastructure was inaugurated and the college annual magazine was released. February 12th, 2021, students are taking up online courses, which is imparted through them, through IBM Open P Tech, which is a digital educational platform that is equipping our students to learn the technology competencies along with workplace skills. 19th of February, our college entered into an MOU with I-Primed Solutions to enable our students to prepare for jobs by taking up online courses. 
24th of February, online faculty development program was held on the role of artificial intelligence in the development of commerce and management services. The speaker for the session was Dr. Mohammad Farooq Pasha, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce and Management, Government First Grade College, Kingeri. 1st of March, International Mother's Language Day, which is celebrated on February 21st, was celebrated with a theme, Fostering Multilingualism for Inclusion in the Education and Society. On 8th of March, as a part of Women's Day celebration, police personnel from Sudgunte Palya Police Station visited the campus, interacted with the staff and students. And again on the same day, Virtual Women's Day was celebrated and the guest speaker was Ms. Concepta Fernandez, Program Executive, All India Radio. On 15th of March, Orientation program for teachers was held by ITA, Bangalore South, to re for the teachers to reinvent themselves and update teaching strategies and teach students to the ever-changing demands and expectations of today. On 13th of March, one of our students from 2nd BBA, Arfa Mohammadi F, represented as a participant from Bangalore City University at the three days state level Youth Red Cross Orientation and Training Camp camp which was jointly organized by Karnataka State Branch of Red Cross and University of Agricultural Sciences GKVK Bangalore. The next is, uh, agenda, functioning of various cells. Discussed about the functioning of various cells like NSS, placement cell and entrepreneurship development cell and the members were satisfied with activities going on. It was also decided to give special focus on employability skills for the students to develop their career success to approve the appointment of new faculty. Mrs. Gogularaj, our faculty BCA is unable to report to duty, was unable to report to duty even after the end of the paid maternity leave. Council approved the appointment of new faculty. Any other relevant point with the permission of the chair? Governing Council ratified the faculty development pro programs, webinars organized and uh, by the faculty members during the current academic year and encouraged them to continue the same. Council also expressed the concern on COVID-19 and advised the institution to follow strictly the instructions received from various authorities then and there for the safety of everyone in the campus. As there was no other point for discussion, the meeting concluded with a vote of thanks. The next agenda is to present principal's report from last governing council meeting to this meeting. The last Downing Council meeting was held on 18th of March, 2021, virtually. March 18th, closing ceremony of the online entrepreneurship program, which was hosted by Udyam Sik Shiksha of Udyam Learning Foundation in association with Lifeline Foundation Trust. The faculty members were trained as facilitators to facilitate the program with 10 online alternate day sessions. And they delivered the program to their students batch-wise for 10 online alternate day sessions in the month of December. 20th March 2021, Mrs. Ifat Jahan, Faculty Department of Urdu, participated in a short story competition during the campaign, Strong Family, Strong Society, which was held at Bift Hall, Queens Road, and won second prize. 23rd of March, Immense Consultancy Services had organized a job fair at our campus to fulfill the recruitment needs of their clients, Radical Minds, Cap system altruist private limited infosys tech mahindra 24 about 7 ai products and solutions emphasis ibe forum and oasis technologies private limited 60 plus final year along with alumni students were screened among which more than 20 students were shortlisted during the process 14th of april virtual session for students by Alpha Aviation Academy was held to make our students embark in a carry on a career in aviation industry. Two students of final BCA from Jyoti Nivas College carried out an internship for a period of three months starting from January to March in the domain of online ass assignment assessment of our institution. Again on 28th April, two BCA students from our college participated in the online essay writing on Dr. Ambedkar's contribution on equal authority in the society conducted by Department of Computer Applications. On 19th of April, Mrs. Pandi Prabha S, faculty from MCA, reported to duty. In the month of March, April and May, faculty from the Commerce and Management Department participated in webinars on intellectual property rights, patenting, valuing water for future, future sustainability, 
international webinars on digital humanities, role of faculties in the national education policy. And as per the university regulations, uh, even semester with online classes commenced from May 3rd, 2021. Teachers are taking online classes through TeachMint app as per timetable schedule. Daily classes are for three to four hours, capped, with, capped for three to four hours with a mandatory 10 minutes break after every two hours. May 20th, principal attended the virtual meet where Honorable Vice Chancellor interacted with the principals on the academic related matters. Rahima, one of the students of first, BA, first BCA, participated in the virtual event on International Day of Families 2021 in the event Family Tree that was held on 15th May 2021. Again on 29th of May, Department of Commerce and Management had organized a webinar on impact of COVID globally on economy, life and coping up with change. The speaker for the session was Dr. Rajesh M.V., Professor Laura Business Academy and e-certificates were issued to all the participants. Again, this on May 31st, Department of Commerce and Management had organized a national webinar on digital technologies to combat COVID. The speaker for the session was Mr. Mohan Kumar, Practice Head, Cloud Transformation, Wipro Limited and e-certificates were issued to all the participants. And 5th of June, online competitions were held to mark the World Environment Day celebrations. Professor Shanti Kokila was a guest speaker and a judge for the event. E-certificates were provided to all the winners. The event was hosted in Google Meet and live streamed in YouTube. E-certificates again were provided to all the participants. And on June 6th, Department of History had organized a national webinar titled The Royal Monuments of Adil Shahis of Bijapur. Ibrahim Rauza and Gol Gomez. This was held on June 6, and the guest speaker was Dr. Shahina Banu, Assistant Professor, PG Department of History and Research Center, and NSS Coordinator, Maharani Cluster University. The event was hosted in the Google Meet and again live streamed on YouTube. E-certificates were provided to all the participants. And yesterday, that was on June 7th, national webinar was organized by the Humanities Department on the topic enhance human potential during pandemic. The speaker for the session was Mr. Damodar Rao, counseling and emotional wellness coach. The event was hosted in Google Meet and live streamed on YouTube. E-certificates were provided to all the participants. Thank you. That's the end of my principal's report. And in addition to that, uh, Solid annual vaccine with the theme light and the science today. It is yet printed once the lockdown is lifted, and the validity of NAC cycle one will expire on March 2022. We have to apply for the application six months before that is October 2021. And uh, we have already initiated the process of preparing our self-study. Moving on to the third agenda, uh, to discuss on the challenges that are faced in particular during the admission. So let me read that. College is included under Section 2F, which is a minority institution. To have 12 we have to have a permanent affiliation. And the majority of our students come from disadvantaged sections of the society. We are putting sincere efforts to bring them on par with the rest of the population. In spite of giving reservations for NTSD, we have only we have only few students. Twenty married girls are pursuing their studies. Few of our students have taken up part-time jobs. In spite of adopting various strategy, we are battling with student enrollment. Sometimes it so happens, few of our faculty members do visit their homes and encourage them to take up higher studies. And again, this year again, we will face a tough admission season due to the COVID-19 crisis, but we will continue to be positive and will never give up hope. Financial help is provided to the students to complete their higher education from various NGOs and this also prevents them from being dropouts. 
and every year students used to apply for KMDC loan under Arivu scheme. KMDC loan scheme also was to be, is also to give education support for all the minority students, and this scheme is also put on hold this year. And moreover, we bank on free collection to pay salaries for our faculty members, and our institution is now facing severe financial crisis due to the dried up funds. This ends the third agenda. Uh, uh, before I move on to the next agenda, may I request Mr. Roman is my counsel to give his valuable inputs. Mr. Roman is my counsel. You should uh, unmute his mic. Yes, ma'am. I think sir will read the point. I think uh, if we can't be able to uh, unmute his mic, he will rejoin. Uh, how is it? Where, where do you think you need to improve? Uh, 
answer in all of this. If you see, we have to work on all the seven criteria, but the criterion four, which is infrastructure and learning resources, uh, we have all the resources, sir. In, in fact, we got a very good score in criteria four. And then we that one with the criterion two, which is teaching, learning, and evaluation. It was actually 350 marks. There it could not come back. Fair enough. I think uh, uh, probably you need to uh, consult a few experts, uh, especially who are, who are continuously visiting on NAC uh, across India, many institutions. So there are people to help you so that you can score better. Yes. I mean, that's my suggestion. Uh, if anything required, you can offline uh, uh, talk to me. Uh, let me understand the processes, uh, what you have adopted. Uh, at least I have seen many getting at least A, A grade, A plus 2. So, possibly you should achieve B and then to A. Yes, sir. You can yes, sir. Whatever it will help, uh, support I can extend, I, I will extend. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, sorry to interfere. We, we actually appeared for the first time. We were not doing a lot of photographic things. This time we are really confident for the last four years for preparing for NAIC. We are confident that we will go above B, sir. Your guidance is really helpful for us to improve our article and other things. The most uh, article important point which Madam was told is uh, the strength and uh, these article teachers will not stay here, sir. It's a very big problem. We'll train them for one or two years. They will come and they go maybe because of the salaries or maybe because of their constraints. All private colleges are facing that. That would retention of staff is a very big problem for us. But still, we are trying article our little best to see that article. We retain the staff and do whatever it best. The first protocol NAC was we were not having experience, we tried our level best, we were not doing what to do. But this time we are confident that we will protocol go above this. Sir. That's what your guidance, inshallah, will help us to improve our protocol uh, reading. We need your guidance, uh, inshallah. I am happy that uh, you have a good number of, uh, uh, say, uh, enthused and credible people on board as governing council members. That's a good yes. sign. Yes, and, it is. Uh, secondly, I, I want, especially personally, if I speak, yes. uh, I was uh, very impressed to note that uh, nearly about 20 married girl students are studying. Yes, I'm dragging them from the house. Yes, yes. It's a very good thing. And uh, obviously, see, uh, girl education is important and you people should uh, focus more on it so that if they are educated, I think they can take care of their families. Uh, and future generations, I firmly believe in that. That and, uh, that's, a, necessary. that's going to be a human service and you people should continue. Sure, sir. So, sure. Sure. Add value to whatever we do. Yes, sir. sir, we find local on difficulty. What we felt is this only girls college is not getting what we call the required stand. People say that if you want to call like co-education, this will increase, but we are really what we call uh, worried that we don't want what we call co-education, we need to have what we call uh, health education also. So that in addition to education, we can consider their character building, their what we call other tarvet also. That was the intention. That may be one of the reasons why this strength is not increasing, I believe, sir. In the coming years, you know. Okay, okay. If I may say a few things here. Please, My please, understanding sir. is... Uh, well, you people have done most of the, say, activities. That's a good thing to know. And yes. being online is a is an advantage in my opinion. Okay, yes. So it lessens the burden as long as your uh, tutors, rather your uh, teachers, are in line with uh, the digital transition that has happened. If in case they are okay, I'm sure you as an academia should enjoy uh, the pandemic situation where we are all forced to uh, uh, shift to uh, more of online or technology enabled uh, uh, teaching. What I call it as online learning and teaching, OD, OLT. Yes. So, yes, certainly uh, it's a good sign. I think being uh, more focused on women education, uh, obviously, uh, you get a lot of, uh, say, handwords. Uh, uh, via online to reach those and then at a minimal nominal cost uh, and they find a lot of time for themselves. They can attend to their work at home as well. At least six hours a day they can engage in learning online. So it's a beautiful thing in my opinion though there are a lot of other constraints uh, when it comes to delivering. But however yeah. for learners uh, 
given the current situation for higher education, it's, it's a best thing. So we can reduce the cost of education drastically. And we can also look at a uh, less number of uh, compliance as we move on. I think new education policy will allow this. Probably your faculty must have been oriented by now. You can yes, become an independent uh, institution, rather university of your own. You can yes, anything which is autonomous for you. I am sure you people can focus much more and see that women education is uh, achieved at large. We do, sir. But we have our own problems. Our community, in particular, the same from the general education. We don't have no net to net problem. Then we don't have what you call the gadgets for which what you call this uh, smartphone, etc. But still, we are trying a lot best. Uh, more than seventy percent of the students are attending online classes, and our teachers are doing their best. In coming years also will continue with this set. And then we are confident that coming days will be a blended learning, both online and offline is very important. Our teachers are convinced with that. See, uh, when we look at uh, the job market, whatever it is, except the government sector, I need to say. Yes. Uh, yeah, basic computer knowledge and then, uh, uh, yeah, internet. I yes. think uh, they will enable them to learn more. So probably teachers... They just need to orient them for yes. what they should learn, as simple as that. And today's generation, uh, in a way, they are able to gather as much information they require. Yes. So, ultimately, teachers are only enable, enablers. So, you people need to give them the kind of constraints you express, sir. That is, uh, they need a smartphone and they need uh, connectivity in the first place. That's a minimum thing that has to happen. Um, Anyway, uh, hands-free also they should use. Yes, right, right. Uh, so how to survive itself can give some suggestion, but if it's online, then how to maintain the college and we have to pay at least minimum salaries to stop, we don't have sources, they ask for 12B, F, etc. We don't have any grant from the article actually in the department. Nathan was telling that we don't have problem in university, but getting mass cards and other article documents from the university will take a year sometimes. We have some problems with it. And then the last time we were not having slavers, and the two languages, what you call books, you could get for years actually. These problems will bring to a notice and should check it out and help us. All minority colleges, in particular, others in general, are facing this problem actually. I do agree. Now, uh, public universities at large have not been up to the mark. That's unfortunate. Except seeing professors getting paid on time, uh, their UGC scale. I don't think yes. anything much happening there. That's an unfortunate situation since I've been following university system for almost two decades now. Oh, and the other thing is, see, look, as an institution, as BET, you, can, you are going to be independent because of NEP in place from this year or coming year, whatever. So you will get enough flexibility. Uh, the evaluation is something going to be continuous. So you need not depend on any university. Rather, see, personally, I feel examination end of the year is useless. I don't think we need to look at that anymore, though it was the system all these years. Let's look at uh, something like continuous evaluation where they self-evaluate uh, as well as teacher help them to evaluate on a continued continuous basis. I think that's where the academic freedom is going to be and you people are moving to it. So you can overcome all these current problems because the existing structure would die on its own. And you people will erect a new system where you have all the flexibility academically. I don't think infrastructure should come into any kind of a limitation for you henceforth. Uh, sitting at home, people can be virtual. Teachers will be uh, virtually going to be there. There will be virtual classrooms. If you do that, I don't think you need any physical infrastructure as we move on in the coming years. And yeah, definitely yeah. your institution being independent under NEP, if you understand it uh, for its yeah. purposes, you can reach thousands of students. There is no uh, restriction for you. I think you may be a small institution compared to large size institutions in Bangalore, but that's not that should not deter or that should not stop you from achieving what you want. Yeah. Look at technology and take advantage of the NEP policy where academically you have 100% freedom, you are the evaluator, you do everything, you need not be a private university at support. Okay? And so, I want you people to just get away from these public universities and look at in however best uh, adopting technology, you can yes, be independent. Yes. So that you can award your own degrees. Why you want to 
uh, why you want Bangalore University to uh, give such degrees which where they complicate your processes? I think this that, that's something uh, we should do away. It's my uh, suggestion. And actually, and it is also tells us to what it all coordinate with some industry. There is also big problems, and the industry should come forward to help institutions like us. That is also principal be in touch with me. Certainly, I will help uh, for whatever skill they acquire. Yes, uh, sir, I'm sure. sure getting a job is not an issue. I'm, yes, I'm telling you, they can make their job. So I will assist uh, based on. Let me understand from your principal, since she said there are so many. Uh, people, uh, rather organizations visiting you for campus recruitment. That's yes, fine. Sir. So most of the online jobs are available. At least who are dedicated, who really make use of the technology rather than um, misusing it or getting into the other side. So let, let me understand those who are so serious and they really adapt to technology. They take advantage of it and they make their careers. I can help them uh, to get online uh, internship, online jobs, whatever. Sir, 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 till we get vertical independent uh, status, there's what the LIC comes and vertical ask us about the infrastructure, the vertical measure, the classroom, they want vertical every year, some thousands of rupees vertical uh, library books, but students are not going to deliver at all. Nowadays, online, everything they are getting it. This LIC now should also be a surprise, some vertical. They have to do something for them. To scrap the LIC, there's no point. Why we should punish institutions? So they. At their best, they have infrastructure as simple as that. My only thing is, since technology has enabled all of us, it's only the teachers they matter. In my opinion, that too, if they, if teachers understand that they are only motivators and they're going to be enablers for learners, that's enough. That's enough. Nothing more we require. I don't, I don't believe in any physical infrastructure. At least no one. Though I too was a part where we were insisting. At least uh, last uh, seven years, I've realized it's not infrastructure. It is the uh, vision team, what an institution has, and uh, the technology platform that's there for uh, both teachers and learners. So what I called it as online teaching and learning, OTO. So you have that platform that, that solves. I think, don't worry about things. Any be uh, good or bad, it's helping all institutions where just don't worry about infrastructure. I think uh, everybody being at their home, if they can dedicate a room for themselves, being a tutor, that's enough. They can deliver virtually. Virtual classrooms can be uh, set up at a least cost. You can manage virtual classes. Don't worry. Yeah. Just being virtual, you get every of their academic activities tracked and there can be notifications to them, which can happen instantly uh, without any human intervention. Only thing is there are some security features that need to be adopted uh, uh, in the virtual platform. Cyber security is in place, so uh, the total cost will be maybe 500 rupees per annum per student, and their data can be ensured, so nothing can be uh, uh, outrageous or their personal, personal information can be secured uh, because of technology. So, go to move towards. No, I'm, I'm not worried about what is the size of your institution or rather what infrastructure you have. Not necessary. Post COVID, I'm sure it's only. Uh, at least higher education is only online. I believe I want it. Cost can be reduced. Yes, sure, sure, sir. But still, what you call payment to the professors, lecturers is very important. As we have to, they still insist us to pay on par with what you city scale, etc. Mm -hmm. Having like your revenues planned, I'm sure institutions like you should lead and tell the universities that look, a small institution like us can be uh, self financed. Uh, revenue generation plans are in place, yes, your faculty can be supported. I'm saying, see, don't worry about your electricity bill, don't worry about your support staff in a huge number, don't worry about maintaining infrastructure, all that. Minimal infrastructure is sufficient. Uh, I think COVID has given that lesson to even NEP. So they're going back to back to the drawing table and then they're, they're coming up with many more, say, flexible uh, plans. That's the order of the day. So let's not uh, these are the things the, uh, that should be passed now. Things are passed. So we look forward for your guidance in the coming years. Inshallah, we'll do whatever it is. Yes, definitely will help you. See, I'm more interested in uh, uh, women education, girls getting educated, and uh, they make use of the online opportunities where they earn incessantly. See, uh, I have suggested uh, most of the leading institutions to bring in a program called Work Integrated Learning Program, W-I-L-P, Work Integrated Learning Program. Yes. You people 
start off that i will help you how to uh, say structure that particular program i'll see that uh, your students get maximum uh, i mean they benefit yes sir. and then um, yeah i think uh, teachers can teachers can also just start your institution teachers can earn better by doing consultation if they are good in their topics let me know i will get them assignments where they pay they get paid the uh, 1000 rupee per hour of lecture let them earn what, what, what should stop them if they are really good at uh, delivering what they know yeah. they should be online and uh, uh, pass on uh, the kind of information that uh, the learners are looking for okay let's help your faculty so that you need not worry they will earn at least 10000 rupees through consulting more by spending 10 to 15 hours a month that's all okay, yes sir. that's okay they should stick on to the college the college should be that self to good platform for them to deliver your part what i'm saying is knowledge is not going to be limited anymore see yes, students of late i'm i'm uh, getting lot of stats from the school education i'm talking about uh, the online teaching by school teachers now Eighty percent of them, they are unable to communicate. Uh, though they were somehow managing uh, in the physical classroom, but on online uh, platform, it's a huge challenge. Now students are saying, uh, saying, and parents are giving the feedback, stating that their words are much better uh, since they get access to most of these informations, and they don't need teachers. But that's not the uh, ultimate thing. But currently, they may. Think so. So that's why I'm saying, teachers, uh, as a management, you please upgrade the way they uh, need to make use of the online platform and the way they present, because communication is simply uh, going to be the first order, and uh, nothing can uh, replace or compensate that particular thing. So, good teacher uh, need to be best communicator. So that's something you you please help them. So let them do trial classes. Now imagine we are having. And our uh, governing council meeting here. Similarly, conduct a faculty meeting. Ask uh, teachers every day one hour to come on Google Meet, and let one or two teachers give presentations and take feedback from the rest of the uh, say faculty. Yes. So that's how they can improve their uh, vocabulary as well as presentation. Let us do it because you know global uh, uh, say the opportunity is wide open and globally one can teach. Let me know somebody who is good in a topic. I yes. can give them one or two uh, say instances where they can teach somebody in Stanford. I don't mind. Sure. I can connect to. I can connect to Canada, Toronto University, or University of Alberta. I know faculty is there, so you can they can interact. Only thing is, yeah, let me understand what the topic and discipline so that I am able to connect. Okay, Your so faculty that. must carry more confidence. Let them not worry about issues around. Let them look at. Let them be focused on what they can deliver. Sure. sure. Go on positive mode. So management need not worry. Look, you can give them ample opportunities. Faculties are going to be on consultation very soon. There is nothing yeah. like uh, we have a fixed faculty. People, anybody can lecture any mass across the globe. So that's something going to be a reality. So. Uh, there's nothing like uh, uh, they're just uh, uh, pinned or plugged or, or restricted to one institution. So if they're calibrating outside their institution tasks, they can even uh, go out on a free mode, uh, uh, say um, platforms where they can go and deliver. They can reach the masses. Okay, well, in Greece, they are they actually our is a charitable institution known as the proprietor of this institution. We pay very much, and we are happy with only hotel uh, sending more than 60 hotel graduates every year from minority hotel community, who who are first hotel generation students. We we'll try to do it in the coming years with the guidance. So I will be in touch with you. Our principal will be in touch with you. We will do whatever is possible from our side. Thank you very much. Please remember, don't don't even compare with others. Let's not worry about what we don't have. Let's look at what the opportunities for learners and teachers, and adopt it simple. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Omar, you would like to order call. So, Omar, sir. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. I noted a few points while you were speaking. 
Uh, I'm very happy to see the numerous activities that you all have been conducting throughout the year. And uh, I think the principal, you, you, all, you all are lucky to have a dynamic principal uh, who has organized so many events throughout the year. I'm happy to know that you have you are IHO certified and you are getting prepared for NAC again in the next six months. I wish you all the best for that. And I like to, uh, because I too am running an education institution, so I know that the, what the pandemic is right now. When we visit our campus, it is very saddening to see that we have all the infrastructure and all the buildings, but there are no students. It feels like we are shepherds without sheep. That is how we feel now. Uh, so uh, the, the, now the only binding force is the teachers. The teachers have to interact with the students at whatever level and keep them together and keep motivating them. The most of the students are getting very depressed because of this time. They don't, they don't see the future. The future doesn't appear clear to them. So we have to keep motivating them and keep them uh, from going any, anywhere in depression and keep them motivated and say things are going to become better and everything is going to fall in line. So, uh, so that, that the important part, the teachers have to interact, keep in touch and interact with the students. Uh, one more thing I noticed was uh, I would like to encourage sports. Any kind of sporting activity in your campus, especially come some kind of self-defense, self-defense exercise or sports for the girls so that generally you will see that uh, most of the girls we had in our campus, we found them to be vitamin D deficient. Vitamin D deficient because they never come out in the sunlight and uh, they are most inside the house and also they have no, kind of, no exercise. So I request you all to uh, give importance to sport and some exposure to the sun. Let the girls in some part of the day be exposed to the sun and also have some kind of exercise. We also would like to thank Mr. Saifullah Sahib who has always been, who has been a close associate of my father. He is a very, he has worked with my father, a close associate of my father. My father was very fond of him. And uh, I was, I'm very happy that he is heading BT now. And uh, with him there, uh, you, all are, you all are in safe hands. And uh, uh, then uh, regarding placements, I would like you all uh, to come to the, the sole objective is that if you, when you educate a child, you want him to be economically stable. Economically independent, right? So that will come only when he gets a job. So please concentrate and uh, see what the companies require and teach the students uh, likewise so that they get placed and they start bringing in money to their homes and there is economic upliftment. So that's regarding placement. And uh, yeah, that's all. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm very happy to have been part of this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your constructive advice and your appreciation and valuable suggestions. Thank you all for your participation. May I now request Dr. Neil Farmizer to propose both of thanks. Dr. Neil Farmizer. Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, just one second. One second, couple of things from my end before you can end. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. So basically, as the gentleman rightly pointed out, uh, uh, it is just not education, it is also health. Okay. So health and well-being is something uh, uh, that principal should look uh, yes. look after too. Okay, in this pandemic, and then yes. he rightly pointed out that vitamin D is something uh, huge deficiency because their life signs have changed. Obviously, uh, that need to be told. Please uh, uh, have uh, sessions from uh, nutrition uh, experts. No? That's something you please do it once in a month so that. Uh, Especially women need to, uh, girl childs, uh, children need to understand that. So that's a very important, valid point. Thanks for uh, focusing on that. Otherwise, students must uh, get a lot of internship opportunities. That's where they, their skill orientation as well as training would happen automatically, where institution will have lesser burden. And placement will not be an issue if they can do at least two or three internships of, uh, say, different nature. Let them be exposed uh, for that. So most of the internship has, uh, are not paid, but there are a few internships which is paid internship. So that's something you should look at, okay? Yes, now onwards, if, if higher education do not 
uh, say uh, take opportunity of whatever openness that is offered by any if you don't and higher education i tell you school education since coding is allowed from 6th grade onwards by the age of 18 or 19 that is 12th grade they would occupy most of the jobs in next in next 6 years i can assure and i, I can tell you uh, that people don't need higher education anymore if in case uh, the work integrated learning program is implemented at the 12th grade obviously with that kind of knowledge they are enough to take up any job including it jobs okay so they they all going to be something like in the best what's happening after 18 years they have to work as well as learn so they first work they settle down they they at least have some kind of a, uh, earning month on month then uh, only 10% of them will get into higher education where they need to scale up and they think they can pursue education further so that is very soon going to be a reality because the cbsc or icsc 12th grade i'm sure they they would have uh, got every insight of what education and they would have definitely acquired minimal skills be it in math or science or whatever in environmental sciences uh, i think in language also they are better off okay that way the constraint that's going to be is higher education no longer going to be relevant unless and until we give them opportunity to earn if they don't earn i don't think they can spend on their education that's how the situation going to be as leaders in academia let's be very very uh, cautious and conscious of this fact and plan things so this is my suggestion to the principal thank you thank, thank, thank you. you thank you Dr. Devi Formilza. Yes, ma'am. Good morning to one and all present here. It's a matter of pride for me to deliver a vote of thanks for this event to all the dignitaries assembled here. I, Dr. Nilufar Mirza, Vice Principal, BIT Sadat Nisa Degree College, extend my sincere sense of gratitude to Shri Karan Kumar Sir, who gave his vital time for his from his busy schedule to grace this meeting. so today we got the opportunity to hear your thoughts which has enlightened us thank you so much sir for gracing the occasion with your virtual presence i also extend my gratitude to kr ikbal sir for joining the meeting virtually my heartfelt gratitude goes to mr umar ismail khan sir for joining this event today and sharing with us his findings and opinions i also thank all the management members and a special mention to Mr. G. R. Rias Sir and Muhammad Saifullah Sir for their participation and mobility to take on the accomplishment of this meeting work. At last, once again, a big thank to all the dignitaries and participants for attending and making this meeting virtually possible and valuable. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Sir.